Today, we welcome to Global Citizenship Education Interview Series, Evelyn Linder and Linda Hartling. Evelyn Linder is a medical doctor and clinical psychologist with a PhD in medicine and a PhD in psychology specializing in the dynamics of humiliation related to war and genocide. She founded Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies, a global network promoting dignity and addressing humiliation. Her notable works include Making Enemies, Humiliation and International Conflict, Gender Humiliation and Global Security, and From Humiliation to Dignity. She's the co-founder of the World Dignity University. Linda Hartling has a PhD in clinical community psychology. She's the director of Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies, and Dr. Hartling has published papers on relational cultural theory, workplace practices, resilience, and substance abuse prevention, and the psychological and social impact of humiliation. Dr. Hartling is the co-editor of the Complexity of Connections, writing, writings from the John Beck Miller Training Institute at the Stone Center and Human Dignity Practices, Discourses, and Transformations. Dr. Hartling is the author of the first research instrument to assess the international experience of humiliation, Humiliation Inventory, which has been translated into many languages to conduct research around the world. And she is the co-founder co -founder of the World Dignity University. So, Evelyn and Linda, thank you very much for joining the Global Citizenship Education Interview Series. It's a pleasure to have you on. We're delighted to be here, Emiliano. It's just an honor to be with you and to join in a conversation together about such important issues. So, thank you for inviting us. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. From me too. <laughs> Thank you, Evelyn. So it's a pleasure to have you both here. And just before this video conversation, we were discussing the importance of engaging in dialogues. And so for the first time, I thought that it would be very important to invite two guests with such a rich and, and important background to discuss uh, concepts of global citizenship, your very interesting world on World Dignity University, uh, your research focus on humiliation studies, that's also very interesting. And I believe the work that you're doing profoundly connects to notion of uh, global citizenship and being global citizens. And so the first question for this conversation together is a straightforward question, perhaps a bit challenging. And the question is, what is global citizenship education and how would you define a global citizen? It is such an important question and a huge question at the same time. So I'll start and then I'll turn it over to Evelyn. I think of global education, global citizen education as a lifelong relational education, striving to connect and repair and strengthen relationships among people around the world and our relationships with this planet. And Evelyn and I have this a deep admiration for the work of His Royal Highness Prince El Hassan bin Talal in Jordan, who said, the time has come for redefining the conduct of our relations and our relationships with one another and with all of our relations on this planet Earth. And so we really hold relationships as a centerpiece for our efforts to look at the issues of human dignity and the dynamics of humiliation. So Evelyn, your definition. Thank you so much, uh, Linda. Yes, uh, I'm just um, very much in uh, resonance with what you say. Uh, we work together, uh, dear Emiliano, uh, every day, Linda and I, even though continents uh, keep us apart uh, geographically, we are uh, on Skype or Zoom every day. And uh, some people call us Evelinda. Uh, <laughs> so, That's uh, wonderful. Yes. So uh, we know uh, exactly what the other is thinking and uh, saying. The only difference is that in, uh, Linda is much better in, in expressing herself. So I'm always very happy when she starts and explains and then I can come at the end. <laughs> She's uh, wonderful in, in uh, formulating. So I'm very happy. So when, uh, when I'm thinking of uh, what is a global citizen, Linda and I, we were mm, discussing that yesterday or the day before, and we both have a little problem with the word citizen. 
um and um we um and we were discussing that many many uh terms have uh meanings that are uh, irreconcilable for example there is one uh, if i make a, a caricature a global citizen might be a person uh, who is uh, traveling from one international hotel to the other on all continents looking for how can i uh, use this planet as a leisure park or how can i look at this planet like a zoo or how can I exploit the resources of this planet to, to get rich? And this person might uh, call herself or himself a global citizen. And this would be the complete the, uh, opposite of what I and Linda, uh, what we think a global citizen should be or could be. Yeah, should be. Somehow the uh, I remember me being in Cambodia uh, you know, tr trying to understand the genocide and being at one of the killing fields in Cambodia, meeting somebody who had taken a first class a plane ticket from Europe or from America, I don't remember, to play golf on the adjacent golf course. And this person had no idea that there was a killing field there. So this is the kind of the opposition, you know, here I was trying to understand uh, us the human species on this planet and what we what we the challenges we have and what we uh, I would try to be a fellow human being and there were people who were using uh, these their own species and the planet as a kind of um, a personal resource to uh, to um, use to exploit. So these are two very different uh, notions of a, a, a global citizen. So uh, this abusive notion of global citizenship, this is not what we stand for. Interesting, because this comes with the discussion about what is global citizenship education, of course, and it can be implemented and interpreted from different angles, can be a little bit more neoliberal so oriented to the international job market and instead a bit more transformational, critical, transformative, the work of UNESCO and, and other entities and other scholars too, many, many of whom were part of this uh, interview series. So when it comes to critical engage with the notion of global citizenship education, uh, it's always interesting to understand uh, the relationship between uh, my guests uh, life journey and their understanding of global citizenship. And so the question is, how does the notion of global citizenship relate to your personal life journey? Uh, you just, uh, Evelyn, shared a short but very impactful experience about your conceptualization, how your conceptualization of being a global citizen connects to your uh, life experience. I'd like to learn a little bit more about your uh, journey of life and how this informs your understanding of global citizenship. To you both, Linda and, and Evelyn. Well, it's very interesting because in my early life, Emiliano, I was uh, in music education. I was a conductor and a choral uh, leader, and I worked for years in that field. And I found that out of that experience of being involved with music, this metaphor for how we can relate across differences, across time and space through music. And I also saw music as being a healing force in the world, so a different model of the world. And that was a lot of the early inspiration of moving, uh, after I left music, moving into this interest with the understanding of relational theory and relational practice and how do we get people to come together? Because I think, as Evelyn has said many times, that we're going to need this sense of global cooperation and relational practice at the highest level to address the crises we're facing in the world today. So I came out of this world of music into this psychology world that led me into studying the dynamics of humiliation because as Evelyn works works has demonstrated, humiliation can be the most powerful force disrupting relationships in the world. 
But now I'm going to turn it to Evelyn because Evelyn has a powerful story about how she began down this path. Yes, uh, Emiliano. Um, Linda and I, we uh, know each other since 1999, but only email. And in 2003, we met uh, in person for the first time. And since then, we develop human dignity and humiliation studies as an organization together. It's both an academic field, transdisciplinary, and then it is also a global network. So since 2003, we developed that together. And um, without Linda, uh, you know, I would not be able to, I would not do a single step in life. And uh, so Linda is my anchor on this planet. And I am the global ambassador of our, global, of our, our organization. Uh, we both develop it uh, academically by writing and uh, organizing conferences and so. But I'm, in, in addition, the global ambassador of our, uh, our organization. Because if you want to bring together a global dignity family, as we call it, a global dignity family rather than global citizenship or planetary citizenship, we say it is a global or planetary family and dignity family. And uh, if you want to bring together a global family, you should not be, uh, you should be global. And you, uh, and we have noticed that it's not enough to look at the CVs of people, whether they are have a, um, a f openness or sensitivity for uh, for equal dignity. You know, even a person who has two PhDs might go home and beat his wife or so. You know, so to say it a bit uh, provocatively. So I go around in this world and I try to identify individuals, people who resonate with the concept of uh, equal dignity and, solidar and mutual sol solidarity on our planet, so as to build a global dignity family. So I move about 40 times per year sometimes, like last year I moved 40 times uh, the whole year. I live on all continents each year and I am never in hotels. I'm uh, taking the, I'm walking if I can. I would not take a taxi if I don't have to. I would not take the plane. I would uh, move very slowly, live. I'm, I am uh, sedentary in the global village. I'm not traveling. I discarded the word traveling because there you have one place. You go to another and come back. I never come back. I always go forward on our planet. I'm a little bit like a grandmother who has many children and goes from child to child to child. <laughs> So I'm living in the dignity dialogue homes of our network. Whoever has a larger uh, uh, apartment, we invite them to declare their home to be a dignity dialogue home for our network members. And this is my global home. So I'm always staying one month, two months in one place, then moving on to the next. And in that way, bringing together a global dignity community. Absolutely. And I think uh, what you're saying is very important because uh, it alights at least two important concepts in this discussion on global citizenship. One is the, the notion of agency. So it's uh, easy in a way to discuss uh, being a global citizen or theorize global citizenship, much more difficult to apply and translate this into our daily action. So agency is a definitely a challenge. The second one is really... Uh, the importance of of um, walking the talk, like as uh, many people would should say, <laughs> right? Uh, so I, I found that um, the, the the discussion, the dialogue on global citizenship, brings in so many interesting perspectives, and even concepts such as the World Dignity University, which is the next question I'd like to ask you. Uh, at the very beginning, to be very honest with you, I thought that you would uh, uh, develop a university, an online university. And then I reread your website and I realized that you're working on a, on a concept, on a, on a vision. And so it's very, very different. And, and so that's why my interest in inviting you both on the show to really explain, and this is the core of our conversation, how as the founders of the World Dignity University, um, how, if at all, this uh, notion, this vision of a World Dignity University connects to, to notions of global citizenship or global solidarity, 
and and perhaps uh, to begin with really a simple and straightforward question what is the war dignity university well i i'll start and then i'll have Ad evelyn add but i want to start out by just saying um in milano that we have such an admiration for what you're doing with creating dialogues and that is one of the central features of our work in fact we have a term of combining dignity with dialogue, and we call it dignologue, because we think that is the, a foot forward toward changing our conversation, changing the educational atmosphere. We realize that sort of the traditional academic uh, approach is lecture presentations or debates, and we really feel that you know, debates might change people's minds once in a while, but it doesn't happen very often. So we emphasize dignity through dialogue, listening each other into voice, and um, learning how to skillfully disagree without being disagreeable. So we can engage in constructive conversations, constructive conflict without aggression. And that's a central feature of this World Dignity University is creating a space for dialogue and conversations. So we've come to believe that this World Dignity University can be a human to human network of networks as a powerful and highly practical approach to realizing an inclusive and creative model of mutual learning. So we're inviting educators and scholars and practitioners and activists from all walks of life and all backgrounds to join in sharing responsibility in co-creating this vision of a World Dignity University. And Evelyn uh, will, can explain the, the original foundation, the start of the university. So Evelyn, would you say more about that? Yes. Yes, uh, as uh, you remember, the uh, idea for the Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies organization uh, came up in 2001 and uh, we it, it came into reality when Linda and I met in 2003. And in 2009, 2010, members in our network, we have about 1,000 in the core, 8,000 on our address list. So they said, OK, you know, academia is one very extremely important field because uh, the um, academic uh, freedom uh, and quality of work is uh, getting uh, narrower and and narrower through the uh, uh, profit motive the the finance side of of academic world work so money should not we think money should not mm, be in the in the in the at the core of academic work it should be dignity should be at the core so oh, but where is a, a university that has uh, dignity at the core and not money at the core where is it uh, okay so let's try to see whether we can uh, we can start with the idea and we launched the idea in 2011 at the university in oslo the pro-rector of this university uh, um, was the host of this launch ceremony. And it is the launch of an idea. So we call it Uni Dig World Dignity University Initiative. So, um, and since we are um, true to our kind of uh, hesitation towards a profit, the profit motive, overriding the dignity motive, we uh, we in our work live uh, or work um, almost without uh, finance. We we have an almost zero budget in human dignity and humiliation studies and in the World Dignity University Initiative. Almost zero budget, which uh, has kind of allowed us to um, only work with people uh, who are uh, authentically interested in dignity and not via money and uh, the this is the the advantage that we have the it a disadvantage is that of course our work is since it is built on on gifts it's a complete gift economy since it is given uh, built on gifts it grows very slowly perhaps sometimes too slowly at the moment uh, we had a wonderful person for example who gifted 10 years of his uh, life uh, to uh, building up our Dignity Press uh, and the Dignity University uh, platform. 
And now the 10 years are over and we are looking for another person who would give ten, many years of their lives to, uh, to develop this without getting a salary and or trying to somehow uh, regenerate income in another way. So it's we are depending on gifts, on dignity gifts, and these dignity gifts can be in the form of time, in the form of anything and not necessarily money. So we are we are trying to steer clear uh, from this uh, influence that that the, um, somehow uh, the kind of summary that I have from our our systems, economic systems at the moment is the following. Everything that is profitable at the moment is being done, whether it's good or bad. Everything that would be good to be done, but which is not profitable will not be done. So this is kind of a summary of uh, the world in which we live. And uh, we would like to, to emphasize what the good that should be done and um, that is not being done because it's not profitable, but perhaps through a gift economy, through uh, inspiring people globally in our dignity family, we can do something. Absolutely. And, uh, and I agree with you. There is a need really to envision a different type of university, for example, uh, one of my recent books, The Emergence of the Ethical Engaged University, talks about this, the, the importance of putting refocusing on ethical values, values of social justice, contributing to the common good, dignity, um, sustainability. And I want to ask you, before we uh, uh, conclude this very interesting conversation, I want to ask you, a question uh, related to your human dignity and humiliation studies network and the work that you're doing uh, with uh, with this network and uh, two or three core uh, uh, elements of, of this. Well, the Human Dignity Humiliation Studies Network was designed from the very start to expand the conversation. I think both Evelyn and I, I was working on a individual instrument for assessing the experience of humiliation. And Evelyn was looking at how humiliation was connected to international conflict. And both of us realized we needed a larger community to have the conversation about the dynamics of, of humiliation because it happens on the individual, interpersonal, social, around the world in many different ways. So the point of the human dignity group is to bring people together that have an interest or insight or are working in this area to end cycles of humiliation and advance human dignity in the world. And what it becomes is we usually have two meetings a year, one in at Columbia University every year in December, and then one in a different international location. And that has brought together people from around the world to talk about these experiences that are that are very complicated and happen at so many levels of society. And in many ways, we're cross fertilizing ideas about how to address these uh, situations more effectively. And people in our community, uh, they work in their own way, whether it's in their, their particular job or in their community or in some other academic setting in many, many different ways. But we try to create a space where they can share ideas to really grow their work. And Evelyn, we will be having an event coming up in, in Madrid. So do you want to say something about it? This is our international meeting. We've been meeting for 20 years and this will be the 40th meeting and it's meeting in Madrid. Of the Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies Network. Uh, they yes. Do yes. It correctly. Okay. In Madrid. Okay. Yes. Let's talk in about September. this quickly. So everyone is invited to come. <laughs> we, we should definitely add the link to the event in the, in the description after the publication of this very interesting uh, conversation so people can access and, and perhaps even participate. I think what you'd see in our meetings is we are, we're very collaborative. We believe, as Morton Deutsch, he was a, 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 what we consider a father of conflict resolution, he taught us that cooperation will outperform com, uh, competition in the long run. So we're very collaborative in our meetings, and we like to have people participate in the way that works toward supporting the work that they're doing in the world. 
Is so, there a theme for this uh, particular meeting, particular uh, uh, event? Is there a, a team or is just uh, a human genity and humiliation studies network uh, annual gathering? It's global vulnerabilities from humiliation to dignity and solidarity. Okay, wonderful, wonderful, very interesting. So these are the, the key elements uh, for the specific event. All right, so we have the wonderful conversation about human dignity, the World Dignity University, the Human Dignity and Humiliation Studies uh, in its uh, uh, core elements, the gathering coming up, the event coming up in Madrid. Now I want to ask you a final question. This is core. Uh, is a challenging one, I know, uh, but the, the question uh, also pushes uh, my guests to, to really focus on, on core elements uh, of our discussions. And the question is, how would you define a global citizenship education in three key words and why these three key words? Oh, you gave us a tough one there, Emiliano. We had to think about it and I'll start, but uh, I would start with connection. C cultivating robust, respectful, resilient relationships. My second word would be mutuality, that we can move toward mutuality in our relationships in the world. And my third, world would, third word would be humility, being able to listen with humility to learn for, from so many people around the world. So those three words, connection, mutuality, humility. Evelyn. Very interesting. I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> But I think, uh, I think the three words provided by Linda are, are really uh, embracing because they, they really put at the core of this conversation connection, which is also involved in dialogue, a mutuality and respect for others. And we uh, amply discussed this today. And humility, I, would, I should say the, the capability to listen to others, right? Nowadays, it's not difficult because we are bombarded by information, social media, and so on. So humility to listen to the other is something that I find fascinating and, and I write about, and, and it's definitely related to global citizenship education. <laughs> uh, but uh, Evelyn, you are free to add a final reaction to connection, mutuality, <laughs> humility. <laughs> You know, when, when people ask me, what is your religion? I say, uh, then I have, uh, in a way, three things I say. So perhaps it would fit. I, I say my religion is first love, uh, second humility, and third awe and wonderment. Or at the universe that is so larger than uh, we can fathom. So love, the lo loving connection. Uh, that uh, Linda also uh, uh, mentioned, uh, the lo loving connection, which also has the mutuality, then the humility would be my religion. And then awe and wonderment is, is standing in front of a universe where we don't, we, which we cannot understand. So to, uh, to uh, uh, resist the arrogance of, of uh, judging, uh, but staying in listening, staying in questioning, and avoiding the arrogance of, of rigidifying our experience. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Evelyn and Linda, co-founders of the World Dignity University. This was a very interesting conversation on the important work you're doing with the Human Dignity Humiliation Studies Network, the uh, World Dignity University, and uh, your wonderful uh, dialogues and publications you engage with. Thank you very much for joining the Global Citizenship Education interview series. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having us. And thank you for carrying on a dialogue, which is something we admire so much. Yeah. Thank you.